Today I'm going to calibrate a scope that I've been working on. I've replaced the display, I've re repaired the acquisition system, and it seems to be passing SPC, which is a signal path compensation that adjusts the scope for temperature variation. It's a fine adjust, and if you think that you're going to calibrate your scope, it has to be passing consistently, or you will fail in your attempt to pass the scope Currently calibration. Currently the scope is running the signal path compensation. I'm just doing this to get accustomed to it being back in the correct case. And um, a couple of things to note on this is you can see on the bottom of the screen, or maybe you can't depending on the quality of the picture, that it has passed signal path compensation at least before. It's actually passed it probably 10 or 15 times, which is not a trivial task since it takes about 15 minutes to run actually like 10 if it's passing. Uh, you can see that the voltage reference shows pass, frequency response shows pass, and the pulse trigger shows spat pass on the bottom of the screen. While you're calibrating the scope, the voltage reference, then frequency response, and finally the pulse trigger will each switch to uh, running and then either pass or if it fails, fail. Fail does not always necessarily mean that the constants have changed in the scope but it just tells you really status that the last time calibration was ran in that section it didn't pass calibration and usually calibration constants are not stored unless there is a pass I'm using an Omnibook 800CT with uh, the docking station in the back and the docking station has a National Instruments GPIB I believe it's a PC2A um, card that's what Tektronix recommends and in fact the calibration software demands that it ha is being ran in DOS environment and it's a pure DOS you can't get away with using the Windows DOS if you try to do that you'll just simply fail um, so and you can't use something like a National in Instruments um, GPIB to USB interface it simply does not work so I mean you can waste your time with that if you choose to and you have to use Tektronix field adjustment software or you can use the Fluke software with one of their calibrators if you got you know thirty or forty thousand dollars to spare um, the software is not particularly friendly to use on this and you will find that the factory is not particularly interested in assisting you in using the software this is intentional they are business partners now with Fluke owned by the same company and they're really not interested in the home hobbyist calibrating their scope they would much rather that the scope ended up in a trash bin so you could buy a new scope for now pushing thirty forty fifty thousand dollars each. Okay so the controller the GPIB on the side runs back to the behind the oscilloscope where there is a GPIB port they all have those and from there it runs over to the my calibration instruments Right now, what, I'll, what we'll be using for this scope, we have a, a Fluke 8842A. Um, this is just a multimeter. It's not actually needed for this calibration, but my software is set up such that it expects that it'll be present, so when I'm ready to actually calibrate the scope, I'll switch it on so that it thinks it's there, or it'll, or it'll give me an error, and, and the whole thing will stop. Um, I'm also using a data, data precision on voltage reference and 8200. These are pretty popular and hard to come by on eBay, but it is GPIP controlled. I have a couple of spares of these. They're so hard to find that whenever I see them, I buy them. So in case it dies on me. And I'm not going to use the Anoritsu, um, which is a radio communications analyzer, but I'm not going to use it for this. And in the middle there, that's a fluke. Uh, what is it? I forget. A Fluke 6061A synthesized frequency generator. This one goes out to 1 gigahertz, and it's perfect for an automated system. It'd be good for a home system too, a, or a semi-automated system that is, where you're instead of using an SG503 sine wave generator or a um, SG what is it 504 leveled sine wave generator which are hard to get by and relatively unreliable you can use this instead um, 
The unique thing about my little home hobby setup is that this is an automated system except for I have to manually move the jumpers on the scope. Although I've made a, a fixture that helps me out with that. But you do have to do that. Um, no, notice that on the Omnibook I put it on a piece of plexiglass, mounted the dock on the plexiglass, floppy drive is mounted to the plexiglass so that um, it's easily moved. I just stick it out of the way on top of some shelves when I'm not using it, which is fairly frequently, but it's all put together. And I have several extra Omnibooks sitting around just in case one dies and, you know, you gotta things get older, caps die on these things too. When you're running the adjustment software between various types of scopes, like say you like say you were adjusting a TDS 644B and now you're going to do a TDS 644A for example, what you're probably going to discover is that although you were able to get one to calibrate, now the other won't calibrate and that's because there are lots of settings that need to be tweaked. The software is pretty unfriendly really. You have to have the, adjust the settings just right to make things work and you can spend hours even, I think the first time I got the cal this thing to work automated, I think I spent a couple of weeks on the software figuring out how to get the what type of instrumentation it was expecting um, and get the settings correct for the drivers to work correctly. It was a real pain in the rear and again tech's not really interested in helping you out with this so um, they give you the software, they'll tell you that it works, but beyond that you have to figure out how to actually make it work for your machine. So you get one scope to calibrate, don't necessarily think that um, it's going to be real simple to get the next scope to calibrate if it's slightly different because it may not be. And, and then where this comes into a big deal is like this scope, I know I've worked on the front end on it. So the calibration, although it shows pass and so forth, it really isn't up to snuff. But I run the real risk when I'm running the software of the calibration showing, you know, a fail in a category or initialized or it gets stuck on running. And that significantly impacts the value or the value to, to you on your desk when you have it and it doesn't show all categories passed. And every time you turn it on, it beeps at you and tells you that the calibration is no, no good. So just be aware of that, that um, there is some risk in running this software. It's really picky software. There's a lot of tricks. You have to relearn DOS. You have to, um, you'll probably be playing with little old Windows 95 or something like that a little bit too because it's a lot easier to manipulate stuff in Windows and then go back to DOS. And um, yeah, it's just kind of a, it's just a drawn out. It's, a, it's an ordeal to get it to work. Okay, I won't be able to show the whole calibration sequence, but I'll be able to give you some flavor to what's happening in notable moments. So, that's been done. I'm hoping that this will all work and it'll start running because I don't remember what all settings I have this at. And like I said before, um, each scope is different. So I'm going to tell it I want it to run the full sequence. It does that sometimes. It doesn't necessarily mean anything bad. Although it's disconcerting, especially if you've been spending a long time calibrating the scope. Let's see. Locate on... With um, earlier TDS scopes, calibrating manually was a possibility. It, um, you know, just took you an hour, hour and a half. 600 series were easier than the 700 series because there's no um, high frequency um, interleave being accomplished. But, um, oh, it's going to take a while. It's doing its um, compensation again. So any, anyhow, but the newer scopes, like the I don't know, maybe it started with the 540Bs and the 600Bs. They um, take substantially more time to calibrate, and it's really pretty tough to do it on manually. So if you don't have an automated system going, it, it, it's going to be a long weekend or at least one really long day. Uh, the other thing that can nail you with that is 
if you have like a one gigahertz scope I wouldn't recommend it I'm, I mean it will take you forever and the reason is is that you're not just doing adjustments but it wants to test the adjustments afterwards to see if they it does a performance evaluation basically after each procedure and so it, it just adds a ton of time so you know and if you're doing a manual system you're you know going from 10 megahertz to 200 megahertz and then 10 megahertz to 250 then 500 and then maybe you're doing at 1 millivolt then 10 millivolts and 20 millivolts and and so you're just all day long switching jumpers manually and and at the end of it all if you get lost you only get a couple of tries at, at certain points of the calibration if you get lost um, and you're supposed to for example be plugged into port one and two and you're in one and three or channel one and two and you're on in channel one and three um, it'll say calibration failed on you and then you get to start that whole section over maybe you were spending the last two hours on that one section and so it can be pretty heartbreaking automated systems the way to go but there's a lot of money in it it's worth probably um, going to Tektronix and um, having them do the calibration so while it's compensating the signal path um, it's selected channel 2 because we're going to do the voltage reference cal first and so that channel is waiting for an input signal although it's not asked for it yet and the signal generator has gone to one of the default settings that it, the software chooses for you but it's not going to be doing anything for a while and I don't see that there's really any activity yet with the voltage reference I'll be using a banana to BNC connector up there, a 50 ohm precision Tektronix um, BNC to BNC into the channel when it asks me to do that. That just passed and so now it's told me to go ahead and plug it in and run the sequence. So you can see the setup as I said we were going to have and I'll press enter and we'll see what happens. So you can see that the remote control is on. It's indicating remote there. And now I think it started at plus 9.5 volts and now it's negative 9.5 volts. Let's do this magic down here. Now it's 9.95 volts. And it just keeps doing that. It's basically adjusting the um, the 1x, 10x, and I think there's a 100x in the attenuator. So it's past the CVR adjustment. Much easier if you're on an automated system. And it is now doing the internal temperature compensation thing again, so it's going to be a while.